Elden Ring has been met with critical appraise across most reviews. Because of this, it's brought in a ton of players who are new to the genre and have never played any From Software games before. A lot of these people, especially the streamers with a large platform, have been quite vocal about the game, and I want to address my opinion on the difficulty of Elden Ring. Difficulty selection is a fantastic thing for games, especially for people who are disabled or perhaps not particularly experienced. This is especially important for story-driven games. A lot of the open-world games people may compare Elden Ring to are story-driven. They are interactive cinematics, so for people who want to experience the story, easier difficulties is a great way for them to do so. This doesn't really apply to Elden Ring, though, because it's a mechanics-driven game. The story is minimal and secondary. You could still make the argument that people should be able to experience the story if they aren't skilled enough to get through the trials that the game sends towards you, and I'll discuss that in a little bit. Elden Ring and FromSoft games in general are very different from what people usually expect out of a game. There's a big misconception that people have learned from other games that dying is losing or game over. That can be frustrating for some people, but in From's games, dying is a core mechanic. It's not game over, it's a learning experience. These games have to be approached with the mindset of learning. Everything about the game is learning repetition and pattern recognition. Dying to an, a boss or an encounter is not losing. It doesn't mean you're bad at the game. It means you need to learn something about that boss or encounter. I have thousands of hours across From's games, and most bosses I come to, I die over and over. As you can see in the background here, my attempts at fighting Margit. Every time you die, you learn something. Bosses and enemies follow set rules. Enemy spawns are consistent. In a first encounter, you may die, but you start to learn what the enemy is capable of. Every attack works the same way every time, and there are animations to tell you exactly what they are going to do. It's how players are able to beat these games without ever taking damage. Every time you lose to a boss, you have to try and understand why you died. You shouldn't get upset that you died because that defeats the purpose. What attack killed you? How could you have avoided it? What was the key animation that came before that attack so next time you can see it coming? Every player is going to have a unique experience. It may take you 30 deaths to beat Margit, as, as you see, but every time you die, you start to learn how to fight the boss. As soon as you disconnect dying with losing, these games stop being frustrating. This loop of dying to an encounter over and over is the game. That is what's supposed to happen. No one is expected to fly through these games on their first time playing. That would defeat the purpose of the game. This leads me back to my earlier point, difficulty settings. There's a reason why From's games don't have a difficulty setting. And this is a little hard to explain without going into what a difficulty setting is for most games. If we look at the most popular culprits, let's take Skyrim for this example. Difficulty settings don't make the game necessarily easier or harder per se. It increases the health and damage of the enemies you are fighting. This is a faulty and frankly boring kind of challenge because it brings very little difference in the actual gameplay. If you were to play on legendary versus novice difficulty in Skyrim, there aren't any differences to the actual game itself. All that changes is that things take a little longer to kill and you may die a little faster. Now, this may, playing on Legendary, make you want to use more of the tools at your disposal to stay alive. 
This right here is the key point I want to focus on. By scaling up the damage and health of enemies, you may need to make use of mechanics you wouldn't normally interact with. In a story-driven game like Skyrim, you may not want to use alchemy to have more potions or pick up a new magic spell that might help you avoid or overcome an encounter. You just want to explore and experience the story. So going down to novice difficulty is a fine choice. It takes the emphasis off of the gameplay and puts it onto the story elements. Elden Ring, like I said earlier, is a mechanics-driven game. If you take those mechanics away, you're left with very little actual game. When people come across a barrier that they feel they can't overcome, they think the only solution is to make the enemy deal less damage and die faster. But that isn't what the game is about. With a boss like Margit, even, if you chose to play on an easy mode, and he had 25% reduced HP and damage, you're going to run into the same problems. It won't actually change anything. The solution isn't to make Margit a easier fight. It's to explore, make yourself stronger, and without spoiling too much, perhaps go find a specific item from a side area designed specifically to make this boss an easier fight. You need to look at all the options you have and find tools to tip the scales in your favor, and then you need to practice. Elden Ring basically has an easy mode already built into the game, a mechanic that the previous games never had. It's called the Stakes of America. You've probably seen these. You probably skipped the tutorial prompt because you didn't care, but they allow you to spawn at key moments just outside of boss rooms or large encounters. In previous games, when you died to a boss, you may have to go through a 15-minute run to get to the boss again to try that fight. But in Elden Ring, you can try as many times as you want with no downside. And that's just one of the things From has put in this game to make it more accessible and easier for new and or returning players. Stakes America could be their own video completely because there's just that much to talk about with them. However, to end this off, I want to talk a little bit about what I think an easy difficulty would look like for Elden Ring, if I had to design one. It would be to reduce the number of actions that certain bosses and enemies could make. That's it. Make the patterns of bosses and enemies easier to learn. They're still punishing. You're still going to die, as intended. It doesn't take away too much from the integrity of the game, but it makes it more approachable for people who aren't up to the challenge of learning a boss like Margit with double or triple the move options of most Dark Souls 1 bosses. I think phases of bosses do a really good job of this, starting off the fight with less mechanics so you can learn them, and then adding more as the fight goes on. That's more or less all I had to say. Um, if you guys have any questions or ideas or opinions, please share them down below in the comments. I would love to see what you guys think. But for now, if you enjoyed, please leave a like and consider subscribing, and I'll see you all in the next one.